In the past, whenever we wanted to warp something, we'd always have to do it destructively, meaning that once you did it, you didn't have the ability to edit what you did afterwards. Well, now that's changed. Vector Warp was one of the new additions when Affinity version 2 came out. It's a tool that has made warping so much more useful with the fact that it's now editable. So today, let's go through what it is, how to use it, and some cool tricks with it too. So as always, we're going to make this as simple as we can. So we've got a couple of bits of text here and a couple of shapes. So these are the things that we're going to warp in different ways. So first off, I'll show you exactly how easy it is to make something into a warp group. So if we select this text here, if we go down into the layer panel right at the bottom, you'll notice that there's this little new tab at the bottom, which is called a warp group. All we have to do is click that warp group and choose which kind of warp we want. Don't worry if you don't know which one it is right now because we can actually change this later on as well. So for now, what we'll do is we'll hit mesh and what you can see is up in this layer panel here, we now have a warp group and inside here is our text where it says subscribe. Now, when we select this warp group, you've got on our text, all these new nodes and very easily, all we would do if we were gonna warp this is literally grab one of these nodes and start moving things around to get the desired effect that we want. Not only can you grab the nodes, but these lines that are in between, you can actually grab them as well and create slightly different designs as well. So we can mess around with this and create something that we like the look of. And simply by clicking off, we've now got our warp. Like I said, what's really good about this now is if we click back onto this warp group and be very aware of this, if that mesh does not turn back up because we are in the warp group and we have selected the warp group, if it's not there, make sure you're using the node tool, shortcut A on the keyboard and all the warp nodes will turn up. There's so many times that when I was trialing this and going through how to use it, kept not realizing I didn't have the node tool on and couldn't find where these nodes were. So node tool all the time if we want to use the warp. So now that we've got these nodes back up, we can again, we can re-edit things and actually think, hang on, we want to bring these further down this way or you know, we can do what we want. We can re-edit things really easily. But let's say we realize actually we, we didn't want a mesh. We wanted a different one. If we head over to the top, right at the top, you've got our warp and this is the warp type. So we selected mesh. We can reset this if we want, which would go back to how it was before we did any warping. In this drop-down box, we can select all the different types of warping that we can. So let's say we actually wanted a perspective one. So we'll click on that one everything will reset and now we can re-warp this in the way that we wanted say for example we wanted something like that however there's something even better about this we like this warp but we didn't like the word so what we can do now is actually going into this layer panel is just select our text and reword our word so let's call it something else so we've now renamed it but kept the exact same warp not only that but if we wanted to change the color of this to something else if we wanted to add some effects to it if we wanted to give it a shadow anything like that we can create that all on top of this and then again we think oh let's reword the words and we've done it again a nice little feature with this warp tool as well is that if we select our warp group is right at the top you've got mute mesh if we click that it'll mute the mesh completely get rid of it however if we untick that it will go back to how it was so if we wanted to make an edit to the text but we couldn't see it properly we could mute that make our edits and then untick that box we'd be back to where we were before. Very useful, very editable. So something to remember with this is that whenever we're moving this warp group, we need to make sure we've grabbed the group. So right now we have the warp group selected. You can see it in the layer panel on the side. If we haven't, and we've actually got the text selected, we're gonna move the text within the warp group, which can actually create some really interesting effects. So our warp group is only these four points here. So anything outside of this will not be warped. So if we grab our text now, and if we move this along, you'll see that our warp is being changed. So again, our warp group, which we can select, is down here still. We haven't moved that, so these letters are still in it, but the other ones have now come out of it. Again, if we grab our text, we can create some really interesting sort of effects just by moving it in and out of the warp group. So in fact, if I do that, that looks pretty cool. Not going to lie. I'm going to move that out the way. Again, making sure we've got the warp group selected. Cool. All right. We've got another set of text here. Let's do something different with this one. So again, if we head down to the warp group, click that. And this time, let's use arc horizontal. Now, back in an old video, I did make one for a way that you can make text around a circle. This has actually made that completely obsolete. This way, you can actually readjust all these nodes, curl this a little bit more if we wanted to, edit the curve how we want, and we can get the desired effect that we want. And again, we can re-edit this as many times as we want. If by any chance you're happy with what you have and you think actually you don't want to edit it anymore, right at the top, we do have convert to curves. But make sure you're happy with the lettering that you have or everything that you have with the mesh 
because once you click that, which I will do now, you can see we're back down to just being a bunch of shapes. Now we've got all these shapes in a group, which if we were to mesh this again, we would have a whole new set of mesh nodes to work with. So because we converted it to curves, it's now baked into it. We can't rechange these letters and we can't actually make any edits like that. We can still change the color and everything, but if we wanted to reword things, we wouldn't be able to do that. Let's just undo so we can get back to where we were. What you can also do is we've got this arc curve right here. Let's say we wanted to move something in the middle. We can't really do that right now. While we're selecting with the node tool, we can click anywhere and it'll create a new node. So we could click right on this line here and create a node, or we could actually just click right in the center and create a node as well and just kind of move that area. Let's say we wanted a node over here. So if we double click there, we can move that area. You do have to double click to create these nodes. And we're kind of making our own little mesh within this arc. We can re-edit all these lines how we like and we're left with that. But again, what is really cool is that now we've got this warp group right here, which is this big area. If we added something into this warp group, we could warp it without needing to do anything else. So for example, we have this star down here. What we're going to do is we're going to add this into the warp group. The first off, if we head over to a layer panel here, we've got our warp group here, which we'll open up. We'll simply drag the star into that warp group. You can see it there. You can see nothing's really happened right now. But if we move this star towards that group, you can see it starts to get warped. And if we move it back out, it kind of goes back to being a star. So you can get some really weird effects with using different shapes. We can move it anywhere we want to get kind of the, the style that we want. In fact, we could even turn that text off. Now we know we've got the warp the way we want it to be. We can simply now reuse that warp just on this star. And let's say that is what we were looking for. Not sure why, but let's say that's what we were looking for. And like I said, we can do this on shapes as well. So we've got our plain rectangle here. One of the most common things that people will want to warp is a flag. So let's say we created our flag design here. I mean, one of the easiest flag is, is probably the Japanese flag, which I'll quickly make. There we go. So easiest flag to make, which is why I made it. We select all the items that we're going to warp, click the warp group, and let's give it, let's use another mesh. Now to make that sort of flowing flag sort of look, if we select all these points and then just move this up like that, and then select these points and move it down like that, and then select the last points and move it up like that. There you go. Simple flag. Easily done. Right. I had to try and think of another quick easy flag. So England flag, really simple. Let's say we wanted to add the same warp group onto this. All we would do is open this warp group up. We've got our Japanese flag symbols. We could just hide them, make sure our rectangle is inside this warp group and simply drag this across. So we can simply reuse that warp group just by moving this new flag in there like that. Very easy. Very simple, very editable. Oh, and lastly, don't even forget, we've got this warp group here. We can select this warp group and add another warp group. Let's say we wanted to add a perspective one. What we can now see is in this warp group, we've got a warp group and then we've got our objects. So now we can warp this warp in a way that we want. And actually, if we want to do, we can go warp and warp it again. So now we've got a warp group inside of a warp group inside of a warp group and we can twist this around if we wanted to. So we can make a whole bunch of warps just on this one thing. You could probably do it forever or until your, your hardware crashes, but it's definitely something that you could get some really interesting effects out of. There you go. Now you know the true power of the warp. Like I said, it has made things a lot easier with the fact that now everything is editable. If there's any specific tool that you want me to go through, then make sure you drop it in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.